is no ordinary school, and these no ordinary children. Each sits wrapped in a world of silence, for each was born deaf, and but for what they learn here would suffer dumbness as well. It is by sight and touch that they develop the gift of speech. To help them in their affliction, Miss Massey has devoted 30 years of her life. From her, they learn that each spoken sound has its own familiar vibration. Patiently, she coaxes them on until, to them, speech is no longer a stranger, but is recognized, just like the touch of a friend. To Linda, it's a game, but what a game, for it teaches her to use vocal cords she cannot hear. Laura learns the same lesson as she blows her celluloid ball into its pocket. A game, too, for Reggie, but for teacher, an unending fight. A fight which goes on in many classrooms, in many different ways, at the Royal School in Margate. Association of ideas, of sight with sound, is the basis of this game, and Brian will soon catch on. From the age of four, he's learning to read lip movements. It will not be their fate to live shut off from the world of sound. To each spoken word, its own look and vibration. That is the recurring theme. A theme which June takes up with confidence that grows stronger day by day. Without this kind of teaching, she would grow up completely helpless, denied the twin gifts of hearing and speech. Now she develops the one and substitutes sight for the other, an achievement of which Britain may well be proud. 